Hey guys, I'm Jesse, and today I'm really excited because we are going to be talking about September 2022 fantasy book releases. There are a lot coming out in September, and I'm really excited about quite a few of them, so we're going to talk about them. If you want to see a more extensive list, I will leave a link to my blog post down below. There's even more releases that I talk about there that you can check out, so we're just going to kind of go over the ones that I am the most excited about and like really want to get to. And then if you want to see more, you can check out more. All right, so the first one that I'm super excited about that sounds really, really cool is Notorious Sorcerer. And this is by Davina Evans. And it comes out on September 13th. This is the first book in a new fantasy series. And for one, the cover, so pretty. Since the city of Vizime was shaken half into the sea by a magical earthquake, the Inquisitors have policed alchemy with brutal efficiency. Nothing too powerful, too complicated, too much like real magic is allowed. And the careful science that's left is kept too expensive for any but the rich to tinker with. Scion, a glorified errand boy, scraping together lessons for money from a little interplanner fetch and carry does not qualify. But when Scion accidentally commits a public act of impossible magic, he's catapulted into the limelight. Except the limelight is a bad place to be when the planes themselves start lurching out of alignment, threatening to send the rest of the city into the sea. Now, a dockside brat who has climbed his way up and proved himself on rooftops with saber in hand might be the only hope. Because if they don't fix the cascading failures of magic in their plane, the powers and their armies and the other three will do it for them. Now, I'm a sucker for like forbidden magic and like hiding your magic and then it like exploding and causing chaos. So that sounds really, really up my alley. So I'm really excited for this book. It sounds like something I know I'm gonna love. Next, we have a Bindel Punk Bruja by Desidiera Mesa. And this also comes out on the 13th of September. I actually have an arc for it. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but it sounds really, really cool. It also sounds like it's gonna be a standalone because nothing on Goodreads shows like book one in or anything like that. So it sounds like it might be a standalone, which I'm always looking for a good fantasy standalone. It says a part-time reporter and club owner takes on a crooked city councilman, mysterious and deadly mobsters in society's deeply rooted sexism and racism, all while keeping her true identity and magical abilities hidden. And it's inspired by ancient Mexican folktale. Like I just said, I absolutely love hidden forbidden magic and like keeping that secret like that is something that's kind of like one of those like trigger words for me like if I hear that your book is like forbidden magic and it's like you have to keep it secret like I'm probably gonna pick it up because I'm kind of a sucker for it. The next one is coming out on the 20th of September and that is The Witch and the Czar and this is by Alicia Gilmore. I believe this is also a standalone because again, Goodreads doesn't say like book one of and normally when they're a series, even when it's a debut, it'll say like book one of. So we'll keep an eye on that one. And this is a debut. In this stunning debut novel, the maligned and immortal witch of legend known as Baba Yaga will risk all to save her country and her people from Tsar Ivan the Terrible and the dangerous gods who seek to drive the twisted hearts of men. As a half goddess possessing magic, Yaga is used to living on her own, her prior entanglements with mortals having led to heartbreak. She mostly keeps to her hut in the woods, where those in need of healing seek her out, even as they spread rumors about her supposed cruelty and wicked spells. But when her old friend Anastasia, now the wife of the Tsar, and suffering from a mysterious illness, arrives in her forest desperate for protection, Yaga realizes the fate of all Russia is tied to Anastasia's. Yaga must step out of the shadows and protect the land she loves. This sounds like it's gonna be fantastic and I am here for it. The next one comes out on the 27th of September and that is One Dark Window and it's by Rachel Gillig. And the synopsis for this one says, Elspeth needs more than luck to stay safe in the eerie, mislocked kingdom of Blunder. She needs a monster. She calls him the Nightmare, an ancient mercurial spirit trapped in her head. He protects her. He keeps her secrets. 
but nothing comes for free, especially magic. When she meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, her life takes a drastic turn. Thrust into a world of shadow and deception, she joins a dangerous quest to cure Blender from the dark magic infecting it. And the highwayman? He just so happens to be the king's nephew, captain of the most dangerous men in Blender, and guilty of high treason. Together, they must gather 12 providence cards, the key to the cure, but as the stakes heighten, their undeniable attraction intensifies. She is forced to face her darkest secret yet. The nightmare is slowly taking over her mind, and she may not be able to stop him. Look, that sounds so cool, right? For one, it sounds like it's going to have like a really good kind of enemies to lovers-esque romance aspect, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be like, a heavy fantasy romance, which I really like. I also really like that it gives like really like dark, creepy, eerie vibes, which seems like perfect for the fall time. And I absolutely love nothing more than when magic comes with a price. Because I feel like magic should always come with a price. Like there should always be a like consequence to using it. And I love when we see that in books. The next one comes out on September 6th. And this is actually a graphic novel. And it is Coven by Jennifer Dugan and Kit Seaton. And this is a queer paranormal YA graphic novel in which a young witch races to solve the grisly supernatural murders of her coven members before the killer can strike again. Again, I actually have an e-arc for this and I really, really want to get to it really soon. I've been really into like graphic novels and manga lately. So it's been like a really nice like break from like heavy word, heavy, thick fantasy tomes. So I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited. The art looks like it's going to be really pretty based on the cover. The next one that I'm excited about is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This will come out on the 27th of September as well. And I believe this is Adrienne Young's adult debut. I've read some of her YA books and really enjoyed them. I want to pick up a few more, but this is her like adult debut. And from what I can tell, it is um, more magical realism than like heavy fantasy. So I'm excited to see what she does. It says, lush with secrets, magic, and a past that won't stay where it belongs. This novel is spellbinding. It is a deeply atmospheric story about ancestral magic and unsolved murder and a second chance at true love. It says, Emery's life changed forever the night her best friend was found dead and the love of her life, August, was accused of murdering her. Years later, she's doing what her teenage self swore she never would, living a quiet existence on the misty remote shores of the island and running her family's business, the tea shop. But when the island, rooted in folklore and magic, began to show signs of strange happenings, she knows something is coming. The morning that she wakes to find that every single tree on the island has turned a color in a single night, August returns for the first time in 14 years and unearths the past the town has desperately been trying to forget. August knows he is not welcome, not after the night everything changed. As a fire raged on the Salt family orchard, Lily was found dead in the woods, shaking the bedrock of the tight-knit community and branding August a murderer. When he returns to bury his mother's ashes, he must confront the people who turned their backs on him and face the one wound from his past that has never healed, Emery. The town has more than one reason to want August gone, and the emergence of deep portrayals and hidden promises spanning generations threaten to reveal the truth behind Lily's mysterious death once and for all. Okay. Let's break that down. Um, a mysterious death, some like breakup, possibly back together. Did he kill her? Did he not kill her? What else is going on in this creepy little seaside island town? Like, I'm sold. That sounds fantastic. And I already know that I like Adrian Young as an author, so her adult debut should be a good time. Okay, and the final one that I am super excited about is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. And that comes out on the 27th of September as well. So end of September is like popping. Lots of books end of September. It is a young woman is drawn into the upper echelons of a society where blood is power in this dark and enthralling gothic novel from the author of Year of the Witching. Marion Shaw has been raised in the slums where want and desperation is all she knows. 
Despite longing to leave the city and its miseries, she has no real hope of escape until the day she spots a peculiar listing in the newspaper, seeking a blood maid. Though she knows little about the far north, where wealthy nobles live in luxury and drink the blood of those in their service, Marion applies to the position. In a matter of days, she finds herself the newest blood maid at the notorious House of Hunger. There, she is swept into a world of dark debauchery, and at the center of it all is her. Countess Lisavette, who presides over this hedonistic court, is loved and feared in equal measure. She takes a special interest in Marion. Lisavette is magnetic, and Marion is eager to please her new mistress. But when her fellow blood maids begin to go missing in the night, Marion is thrust into a vicious game of cat and mouse. She'll need to learn the rules of her new home and fast, or its halls will soon become her grave. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is standalone. And that just sounds so cool. Very, um, oh my gosh, what is, it it sounds very like Blood Countess inspired to me. And I know I'm trying to remember the actual, like, historical... Because, like, do y'all remember that tale of, like, I think they called her the Blood Countess, and she would, like, kill her handmaidens and, like, bathe in their blood, and, like, it's a real historical figure, and it was, like, really creepy. So it sounds like that to me. And I'm here for it. Like, it sounds like there may be vampire-esque inspiration, but it doesn't say vampires. So we'll see, because those sounds... Like, it's going to be a good one. All right. That is everything that I'm, like, super excited for that comes out in September. Like I said, there's a bunch more books that are coming out. I will leave my blog post, again, down below if you want to check out even more September fantasy book releases. There's a couple sequels for books that I've been, like, meaning to read, but haven't read the first book, so I didn't want to talk about the sequels here because, like, I'm obviously not going to get to them by September. But yeah, check it out. There's a ton of books coming out in September and let me know what you are most excited for. All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie and I will see you next time. Bye.